Welcome back. What we're going to see now is an example of how to use texture reference to model geometry. And this technique is really, really good for when you're modeling background props and things, things that are going to be at a pretty close range to the player and even things that are pretty far away. So let's see how this works. Let's open up an example scene here. And the scene we're going to open up is called Example Building. So I'm going to pop that open. This should look familiar. It's the uh, building from, uh, from the volume one. Now, the texture looks really nice and crisp on this object, and uh, it looks detailed because if you go over to Customize and go to your uh, Preferences, go to the Viewports tab, you can configure your driver. I'm using a uh, Direct 3D 9.0 driver. If you go to Configure Driver, you want to set up your download texture size to 512 and tell it to match bitmap as closely as possible, and hit OK. Sometimes after doing that, you might notice a little quirk, a little bug in the viewport where it won't update and it'll still show the low res one. Uh, to fix that's pretty easy. Just turn your hardware shading. This is what I find works. Turn your hardware shading on and then off. So the shortcut's Shift F3. So if you hit Shift F3 a couple of times, the viewport will update and it'll suddenly start to work again. So little weird kind of glitch right there. 3ds Max's viewport, but that's okay. Um, all right. So you can see here's an example object, one that I've already created. Okay. And if we look at this. This object it mainly looks good because of a high-res uh, detail texture. But if we look at this from angles, we can see that the object actually has uh, areas that are modeled in and have detail. Okay? It looks pretty simple, but it looks really good in-game. And basically, the work's being done by this geometry that is cut into the object, and it's all based on the texture that's on the object. So basically, it's... Essentially, what it comes down to, it's using texture reference to actually model realistic objects. So it's a pretty simple technique. Let me show you how to get this done. So let me first start off by creating a new object. I'm going to create a simple plane. And I'm going to adjust this here. I'm going to take down the segments to one and one. Also, I'm going to convert this to an editable poly. Very important. All right. Uh, I'm going to go to vertex mode and I'm going to turn on my snapping. I'm going to make sure that my snapping is set to vertex snapping. Okay, very important. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this stuff here and just start to snap it to this other object. So basically I'm using the original object for modeling reference. So it's very simple. We're just building a simple, you know, polygon plane here. Okay, so there it is. And, um, now we got that done. I'm going to take my snapping off. Now that that object is there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the original object and I'm going to hide it for now. I'm going to take this object here. Uh, this object needs a material, so I'm going to open up the Slate Material Editor. And we can see here, let me maximize this real quick. This is the material from the wall object. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to right click and go to Assign Material to Selection. And the material will be slapped onto this polygon plane. The UV unwrapping is uh, horrible right now, so let's go ahead and fix that very quickly. I'm just going to very quickly drop an unwrapped UV modifier on this. And I'm going to take all the faces, and I'm going to do a planar projection. I'm going to go best line. It's going to do a pretty decent job, not good enough. So I'm going to go to edit. I'm simply going to edit this stuff so that uh, so it looks you know so it looks like the way it's supposed to. So I'm going to take this stuff here and let me also go to my options and take the tiling bitmap off. I'm going to move that to about right down there and move this to about right here. Probably look pretty good. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to collapse that. Don't need that modifier anymore. Okay, so we've got this high risk texture in this object, we look at this from an angle, it's just a flat billboard sort of effect which looks decent if this was a far away object like this it would look good enough okay but since this is an object that the player can walk up to and look at from this distance you want it to have some depth and look a little bit more realistic than this okay so uh... we're going to use a technique here if i go to my left view it's just going to look black so here's what i'm going to do let me go to my perspective view. I'm going to take the entire object and uh, let me change the pivot right here to the center of the object. I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees. Uh, that should do it. So now if I go to the left view, this is what I have. What I can do 
is I could start to chip in geometry based on the image of the texture and build these windows out. So you can see we have these different windows, which are very squarish in nature in terms of shape, and we can actually start to, uh, to work this stuff in. So I'm going to go to edge mode, and I'm going to take the top and bottom edges, and I'm going to grab my connect tool. I'm going to connect that once. You can see I have an edge in the middle over here if I take the grid off. Now if I move this edge, what's going to happen is I'm going to distort the UVs. That's a destructive workflow. We don't want that to, have, uh, to happen. So one thing that I can do is I can come over here to the Modify panel and turn on my Preserve UVs. This is a pretty neat 3ds Max features. You can see now that I move this geometry, I don't affect the UVs, which is excellent. Now, this has some limitations to it. It's not perfect. It's actually a little bit buggy, and you'll see that in a moment. So I'll just come in here and connect this again. Basically, I'm just moving some edges around, trying to get this stuff over here. Um, trying to get this one to match right here is pretty good I guess for this top window that's the one I'm going to worry about for the moment and I'm going to go to connect and I'm going to move this up and so far it's working pretty good the preserved UVs but you can see here it messed up see that see how now it's acting all buggy and it's messing up the UVs that is not good so sometimes it just can't be helped um, you will run into little bugs like that. It's not perfect. So in this case, once I move it and I place it, it's good. But if I grab it and I move it again, that's when it starts to mess stuff up. So just keep that in mind. Little quirks like that, you'll have to get around. But if you don't mind it and you can find a way around it, then everything just works out pretty good. So I basically created a line for that little windowsill, and I created this area for the window. Technically, what I want to do is I want to be able to take this window here, uh, inset this a little bit like this and then be able to extrude it and push it in but you can see when I do that the UVs get all messed up and that obviously is not good so let me undo that right there so one way that I can get around this problem is by using the cut tool in 3ds Max and I can just make a cut there and just go to the corner of the window here corner there I'm going to connect that there and just basically you're just tracing you're using your image here literally to trace almost like you were back in grade school again tracing over drawings and stuff and coloring them in it's essentially what you're doing here so now I could take this polygon that's in the middle here let me go to a perspective view and I can push this in I don't want to extrude it because if I extrude it what's going to happen is something like this and that doesn't look very good so what I just want to do all I want to do is push this in like so. Now, if you push it too far, the texture gets really stretched. So pushing it just a little bit gives enough of a 3D effect without destroying the texture, the UV coordinates. And then you could take some of these uh, polygons, like this one, for example, right here. And if I wanted to, I could extrude that out just to give this some depth and pull that out just a little bit. The texture stretching is very minimal compared to the benefits of this modeling technique. It's uh, well worth it. And if you wanted to, you could even take these little ones, these little uh, polygons that are right here on the ends and just stretch those or extrude them out just a little bit like that and you can see how it still looks really really good and you would essentially do the same for all the windows it's the same exact uh, technique so I could come in here and for example on this little window you would want to do the same thing on this little uh, area down here is a little hole in the wall you'd want to do the same thing so any major details in the wall you would want to model out if this is an object that's going to be visible by the player from very close range you'd want to model out some of these details okay so I'm going to end this here go ahead and use the technique to see if you can finish the rest of the windows and see what you come up with in the next video I'm going to talk about triangulation and just some important technical details to take into account when using uh, this type of modeling technique